Thanks for stopping by guys. My name is Glenn and I'm super excited about today's build which is an industrial style coffee table that I made for a fundraiser. It raised some money and it was really fun to make and hopefully you'll learn a few things along the way about what to do, what not to do, but either way I hope that this catalyzes you to run out to your shop and start dreaming, get to work building your own things. This tabletop is really a simple build. Literally, I'm just gluing some sticks of wood together. These sticks, aptly named stickers, get stuck in between large bundles of wood to separate them so that forklifts can get their forks into the bundles to move them around. Basically, they are plywood grade lumber. It can really make or break the look of your project by how you place different colors of wood next to each other because different colors or textures can create contrast or symmetry depending on what you're looking for. You as the designer, you get to think through and put your creative spin on builds. I've also learned to number or mark any wood pieces that I'm working with. If I'm sawing on them or flipping them from end to end or moving them from machine to machine, sometimes I can get them out of order and I might even glue the wrong two boards together. This is especially important if you've had too much to drink. Spoil a photograph of a person or thing by unexpectedly appearing in the camera's field of view as the picture is taken. Right here, my youngest daughter is teaching me about what a cat does when it wakes up from a nap. It stretches its hind legs in an awkward, uh, yet nimble fashion. This is really important information for you guys to, to know. You're welcome. Alright, back to work here. I'm using the table saw to face these reclaimed weathered boards. You need a clean, flat, 90 degree face, otherwise your glue won't adhere properly. This is particularly fast work with a table saw, so if you don't have one yourself, see if you can find a friend who will loan you one. I sawed both sides of each of these boards, except for the sticks on the edges where I wanted to keep that weathered look. All right, now it's time to glue everything up. As I said before, this is a fairly simple plan for a top. I'm putting them in the order that I numbered them to keep the pattern that I saw in the beginning, and I'll clamp them up and glue them with some tight bond glue. Unfortunately, I didn't get footage of the glue up. I put some plastic down on my workbench to keep the glue off of it, and I bumped the camera. There's some great footage of my shop floor, and I'll send it to you if you email me. Fortunately, I got some pictures of the entire glue up. I used every clamp in the shop and two pieces of angle iron and some old brake rotors to ensure that the panel stayed flat during the glue up. The steel in this glue up serves a couple of purposes. First of all, I wanted to keep the panel flat and straight. Secondly, I wanted to rust or leave mill scale and oil on the wood. These rusty and black spots and streaks actually created a weathered and reclaimed and steampunk look to the top of the coffee table. Most of the time you would put something in between the wood and the steel to keep this from happening, but I wanted it to happen. In retrospect, I actually wish that I would have left one of the rusty rotors on the face of the wood as well. This is the bottom side of the top. I wiped the glue off of the top side when it was still wet, but the bottom had glue pour out from me clamping the sticks together. So here I'm using a paint scraper to remove some of that glue. The panel is way too big for my planer, so I started sanding on it with this 120 grit sanding block. I did copious amounts of light sanding on this tabletop because I wanted to keep some of the rough weathered texture and color, but I also needed to make it smooth and consistent and to remove some of the splinters. I also wanted to make it smooth enough that you could set some coffee on it without spilling. Imagine dumping coffee from your brand new coffee table on your guests. Awkward.
here, I'm using some steel tubing to put one last layer of mill scale on the top. As simple as the building of this top was, the final finish was yet to be done, which in my opinion is the most important aspect of this top. I used some general finishes and Durovar semi-gloss polyurethane for this project. It was my first stab at the general finishes products and I loved it. Now I did multiple coats to fill in the height differences between the top edges of the boards. But what I found out was that it filled in the differences quite well and left a beautiful finish on the wood. I'm using an air supplied HVLP sprayer at about 25 PSI. I chose the sprayer over a brush because the sprayer filled in the unlevel surfaces without any brush marks. Then I did some more sanding. 400 grit in between coats of poly. I just did this lightly to take off the dust particles and to smooth out the surface of the poly. I did this between every coat. Then I took a damp rag and removed all the polyurethane dust and any other foreign debris on the surface before starting my next coat. The Enduro VAR is amber colored, so be aware of that if you're planning to use it for one of your projects. Notice I'm spraying past the ends of the top. I do this for uniformity of spray. If I didn't go past the edge, it would pool the poly at the edges of the tabletop. And with that, the top is done. Now onto the steel base. I called up my local steel supplier and ordered some one by three steel tubing. It's 18 gauge, which is about a one eighth inch thick wall. If you don't know who in your area supplies steel, feel free to hit up Yahoo. I found it much cheaper to buy steel from a local supplier than one of the big box stores. Plus, it typically comes in 10 to 12 foot lengths and you won't find those at a big box store. This was structural overkill for this table, but I was going for a certain look and style, industrial style and industrial strength. Then I went to work sizing all of this steel. Personally, I really like to use jigs when sizing steel, and I built this jig while the table was still just a drawing in a notebook. My jig is helpful for finding angles for cuts and for making repeated cuts. It also ensures that both ends of the steel base are the same size and height so that your table is level when you're done with it. This one I made out of some scrap pieces of wood that I had in the shop that I pin nailed and screwed together. It also gives a truly flat surface to join pieces of steel if you don't have a flat surface available in your shop. If you have ever been on the fence about starting to weld but haven't done it so far, I would wholeheartedly recommend that you would start that. 
Welding may look complicated, but it's really not that difficult. There are some fairly simple principles at work here. I ground all the weldable edges to a 45 degree chamfer type edge so that the welding wire would penetrate the seams. Again, this is designer welding, furniture welding, which means I'm going to grind the majority of the welds off for aesthetics, meaning I want it to look flat and beautiful. My dad actually taught me to weld when I was eight years old on an old stick welder. Notice that I'm using a small cursive E to create a puddle that goes across the width of the metal. About halfway through this build, I caught a vision for having some steel corner inlays on the wood top. So here I am cutting and now drilling the corner inlays that will go into the wood top at the end of the build. Okay, now that the base is completely built, I'm looking to put a slate rust and black patina on the steel. So I used some slate black metal stain from Sculpt Nouveau. There's a link down in the comments below. This process has quite a few steps to it. First, you clean the steel with metal degreaser and cleaner a couple of times with a sponge and you rinse the metal in between. Then you take a sander and rough up the coating on the metal so that it will absorb the stain. Then you follow it with more degreaser and cleaner. I have a link for the metal degreaser that I bought from Sculpt Nouveau down in the comments below as well. After all that prep, then you spray the stain on. I love the inconsistent coat with rust and black patina all mixed together. I think it leaves an artistic and beautiful look that really lends to that industrial or steampunk look. You can't tell from the video obviously, but this stain left a very acrid smell hanging in the air probably need to look that up in a dictionary. So now I'm just rinsing off the stain per the instructions on the bottle. The next step in the process is to take a torch to expel any moisture that is left in the metal. You do this before you put the lacquer on so it doesn't encapsulate the moisture in the lacquer. All right, after all that prep and finish, I'm back to my compressed air supplied HVLP sprayer and I'm putting on some Sculpt Nouveau spray ready lacquer. I put multiple coats of this on and sanded with 400 grit sandpaper in between the coats. The lacquer finish actually serves two purposes on this. 
First, I want to protect all of my hard work. The second reason is that the lacquer encapsulates the rusting process. So when you put a patina on the way that I did, it actually rusts the metal and that metal would continue to rust unless you encapsulate it and starve out the oxygen. After the lacquer dried out, I center punched some places for some screw holes. This is a two-step process. I drilled pilot holes that are significantly bigger than the screws that would allow movement in the wood with any kind of temperature or moisture changes. Then I drilled holes on the bottom side that were big enough for the screw head to fit in. The screws that connect the frame to the top then are hidden within the steel tubing. To me, one of the most satisfying parts of the entire project is when you get to screw it all together. Connecting the frame with the top, now we're getting somewhere. Now that that is all done, it's at this point that I really tried to go to another level of customization. I knew it was going to be auctioned off and I wanted them to experience a custom steampunk industrial coffee table. So I got some quarter inch round cold rolled steel from my big box store and I began to fashion some homemade nails out of it. I did this by heating it, and smashing it with a four pound hammer and then repeating that till it finally mushroomed out to make a, a small nail head. This is my version of forging steel. Then I cut it down to size and I took my angle grinder and began to form points on it. What I envisioned was a heavy gauge nail, completely custom. So what do you do when you have spent days making a perfectly good top for a custom coffee table? Of course you take a huge risk of screwing it all up and start chiseling out the corners. This is a very high risk and probability of something going wrong here, but I took my time and I think the results turned out pretty good. Now for the finishing touches. I had also rusted and stained these inlays and I nailed these inlays to the top using some ES3000 adhesive on the nails to make sure that they didn't come out later on. And here are the results.